his several senses of humour. In other words, what produces a, a faint smile in one house will produce a belly laugh in the other. Now, it cannot be said that all of RTE's efforts at television comedy have been crowned with success, but some of it was very good indeed. And here's a selection for you this evening, environmentally stored in hygienic conditions and presented with no extra additives. Oh, God, but of course, in those days, too, uh, as we used to call them, aye, days, um, we, we didn't have uh, any uh, entertainment of any description, no. We made our own entertainment <laughs> of any disruption. <laughs> no. We made our own entertainment in those days by watching the television. <laughs> watching the television. Aye. That's the way we put it now. Aye. In our own way. And we would all gather around the television, the whole 17 of us, and you might spend, oh, two, three, four, five, six, nine, twenty-seven, thirty-two. You could do the lotto at the same time. Uh, twenty-six, three hours watching, watching the television. And God, it was a pastime. Now, to be honest, it, it passed the night. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it made the evening um, shorter. Uh, and we would all gather around, and at, at the finish up, my grandmother, she would say, Turn it on! <laughs> After the news, we will be bringing you part two of tonight's feature film, starring Charles Boyer and Simon Signoret. But now, by reciprocal arrangement with other EEC networks, we bring you live the main news bulletins from the Euro capitals. Here is the news. Red boy a jack for a change. Roma. Buenos Aires. A report from the Institute of Hygiene expresses concern that the environment has deteriorated. Deteriorate. Well, I'll tell you one thing anyway, it's worse it's going to get. <laughs> Dublin Bay, the report said, was seriously polluted. Well, it's just as well they didn't see yours truly last night. I was a bit polluted myself. <laughs> Down in Rush I was. Of course, that's not really Dublin Bay. It's more like Alaska, if you ask me. Well, listen, do you know what I'm going to tell you? I think that something definitely comes over the point. In fact, all the porter, as soon as you go through the lights at Whitehall, it gets get terrible bubbly. You know what I mean? I mean? Very embarrassing side effects, too. How is that But sure, that's it. As long as we get enough, I suppose we won't moan. Huh? <laughs> I say, if you get enough, you won't moan. <laughs> well, hell, Carl, I mean, hell, can you? <laughs> but the price they're charging. I went into a place the other night, which they had the neck to charge me 28p for a pint. <laughs> now, I grant you they had parakeets on the floor and they stuck the car on the wall, but how do they get away with it? I ask you, how do they get away with it? Galway. <laughs> Speaking at the opening of the Galway Oyster Festival, the parliamentary secretary to the minute... The Galway Oyster Festival? Because your man has ventured in very far afield, isn't he? <laughs> Ten years ago, he thought anyone further out than Chapel Lizard was some class of a Choctaw or an Apache. But now it's the Galway Oyster Festival, no less. If he's seen an oyster, that told me to pull up a note saying, please do not spit. <laughs> America. A statement in the Washington Post that President Nixon has appointed Finbar Nolan as medical advisor to the White House has been denied. Don't advise me, mind you. Between ourselves, he was never any great friend of all than that man, no. Finally, the potato situation. It is understood in Brussels, well, I'm glad it's understood somewhere, because we can It is understood in Brussels that the supply position has further deteriorated. Hey, are you trying to take the mickey out of me? Or is there no other words you can use? Now, this potato business makes me... <laughs> they never told us this when they were trying to get us into the common market. Oh, no. They never said that Iceland and England's going to war, so the one and one is going to get the mallet. They never told us that the sport was going to be a thing of the past. They never got down to the grassroots. And that's what we're going to be eating, if you ask me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
Ursula and Tony. And now we come to our final couple, and we have our own local favourites, Sonny Brannigan and Yvonne Higgins. And they're going to dance for you their own interpretation of the Foxtrot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sonny Brannigan, Yvonne Higgins. <laughs> something which is very important, although of course not all that important, in all our lives. <coughs> now let me say at the start that it is the most natural thing in the world and that there is absolutely nothing to be nervous about. Now, where was I? Oh yes. Now to start at the beginning, we have men and women. This is a man, and this is a woman. What is the difference between them? Well, the man's hair is usually shorter. Um, anyway, our man and our woman come together, and the result is... Well, that's quite like that. I mean, it is perfectly all right to shake hands, within reason. Now, after a courtship period of six or seven years and an engagement, our man and woman get married. It is after the marriage that the babies come to the happy couple. Now, let me stress that point most carefully after. But you're asking yourselves, how does the baby come to the happily married couple? Yes, I thought you would be. Well, there are many theories about this. I mean, some people, for example, believe that the baby is found under the leaves of a common a garden cabbage, or that they are brought by our friend, the stork. These theories, I am in a position to assure you, are quite untrue. Unfortunately. It, the real facts of the matter are that... Uh, Well, let us take the simple analogy of the birds and the flowers. And, of course, the bees. Now, supposing we have a bee and a flower and a bird. Now, the bird brings the pollen from the flower to the bee. No, it's not right. Um, the bee pollinates the bird. Uh, 
<laughs> the pollen is in the flower, and the bee brings the pollen. There's the bird coming in. The bee brings the pollen to another flower, and the result of all this is. So you see, it's all rather difficult, that, but worthwhile, if you know what I mean. Right, anyway, you can find out about us the way we all did, by listening to the dirty jokes at school. Well now, first item on the agenda, gentlemen. What attractions can we offer the tourists to bring them flock into Ballymagash? Free beer. Ah, shut up, you, and don't be taking advantage of me good manners. I know the bloody answer, but if you'll hold your wish, I'll ask you all these questions. <laughs> we don't mind you asking the question, Councillor Mooney, if you don't want to give us a chance to answer them. Uh, here, here, that, that's the democratic way of doing things. That's far too bloody much democracy in this country at the present time. And after all, what is democracy, anyway? Democracy? It's... It, 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 it's a government by popular consent. That's, that's what it is. Government by popular stupidity. That's what it is. We'll have no bloody democracy as long as I'm chairman of this council. I tell you, what question are you going to ask, Councillor Moon? Oh, yes. Well, what is the most popular way that, that the Irish people has of passing the time and entertaining themselves? Oh, oh we go. That's a six mark on a six mark on a Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's sex, drinking after hours, sex, and last but not least, culture. Now, what do you say to that? Well, because there's something in your crack, Council Moon, there's something in your crack, all right. But how could we use sex as a tourist attraction to the gods of the authors? Oh, no. Not, 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 not if it's combined with culture. Oh, well, no, that might be all right, old Farden. But so there's no sex in Irish culture. Oh, no. Ah, there will be after you follow my plan. What is your plan, Councillor Mooney? I'll tell you, to hold a film festival. A, a film, film festival. festival. A film festival. That's the best way of combining sex and culture legally. Oh, be good. Aye, aye, aye. And extensions for the duration of the festival. Oh, be good. Sound, 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 sound. Oh, but tell us, uh, where does the sex come in? What? I mean, Lassie, Hopalong Cassidy, Song of Bernadette, Mickey Mouse. There were never any sex in any films I ever seen. Oh, be good. You to see. You went at the pictures for a long time, Coaster. <laughs> Did you never hear the last tango in Paris? Oh, 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 <laughs> You're onto something good now, Coulter, for a change. You are. Oh, well, no, 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 hold, hold on a minute. Oh, no, oh, hold on a minute, no. So we, so we couldn't be that bare Oh, it's not the bare face the people want to see, Coulter. Don't be getting yourselves unnecessarily excited. There'll be something in this for everybody. There'll be sex for them that goes for that kind of thing and culture for them with weight constitutions and a bit of both for the press. And we'll all be in the papers and television. It'll be a tremendous success. Oh, but tell us where the PP open a, a festival like that. Well, I doubt if he would, but we might get that. One of them Jesuit boys down from Dublin. I hear they're very broad-minded. And sure, if they won't do it, I'll have to do it myself. All in favour? Aye! Well, so much for the, the, the actual bill of, of events, but we are now going to show you through the courtesy of the, the Ballymagash Television Co-op and Petrol Pump an excerpt from the winner of the... the, the uh, the Parnell Mooney Golden Tulip Award, which is entitled The Exertist. And in all seriousness, this picture is not suitable for children, but neither is it suitable for adults or those of a nervous disposition. spies like us doing in a joint like this. You seem to be upset, my child. What is it that disturbs you so? Oh, Harfell. I don't know. It must have been something I ate. I felt as good as dead. He gave me a checker and to me he said, Your body is knackered, you're in 
an awful state Then he asked me which pieces I'd like to donate My heart is in Holland My lungs are in New York My liver's in London My brain is in Bangkok I hear that my kidneys are somewhere in Sydney. There's bits of me working all over the world. Do you know what I'm going to tell you, Rose Violet? No, what? But why this shower out here can't get up off their fat armchairs and walk over to the canteen for their coffee like everybody else is beyond me? Yeah, well... Maybe they're trying to avoid meeting people they don't want to meet. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. true. Like a viewer, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> you must be joking. Yeah. This lot out here would know what a viewer looked like if they saw one. Saw one, yeah. Right. Who's first this morning? Well. Ah, rather interesting program this morning. Rather delightful, rather boring. <laughs> Simply must tell you lads about that rather charming little story in this morning's Daily Mail. All about a little boy who wanted to go on an orphan's picnic. So, <laughs> nice one. He shot his parents. <laughs> and I like it. Now, sorry for disturbing you, Mr. Bourne, but do you want tea or coffee? Ah, rather nice idea, rather nice. How much is the coffee? 18 p a slice. 18 p a slice. <laughs> I kid you not, I kid you not, alas. Is there none left over from the song contest? No, 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 no. You finish it yesterday, Mr. Bourne. I saw you myself. Ah, very well, very well. One copy then. Leave it outside the door. Thank you. And I'm just going to look for my money. Going to look for his money. Yeah. Don't let years I'm listening to that. Money runs through that man's fingers like glue. Oh, yes, you come back here a second, you say, <laughs> Sorry, ladies, but I seem to have left my wallet at home. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, but I seem to have left my wallet. <laughs> 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 I told you that was not right, wasn't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was very modest with the money, all the same. So was a fact. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could stand in a bar with that man all evening, you wouldn't know he had a penny. <laughs> 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 left his home is right. Yeah. Probably left it locked in the freezer. Come on, anyway, there's other things to do. Come oh, on, yeah. get that bucket oh, no, off. Well, before Irish television or Gay Burn ever came on the air, Ireland's biggest star was undoubtedly Jimmy O'Dea. Now, Telephone Sharon had only a few years in which to capture the comedic talents of Jimmy O'Dea in sketches that largely originated on the stage. And here is one of them now as Jimmy creates his most uh, famous character, Biddy Mulligan. Imperial Hotel Miami. Are you in starting the... that all over again? If it's going to be a Barney, then it'll be a Barney. Nobody wants a Barney. Barney. No, 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 Mother, he only wants the news, so read the letter, Mother. Oh, right, Give it to me and I'll read it. Now, I can read it. I can read my own letter, thanking you. You think I'm illegitimate or what? <laughs> Imperial Hotel... Did you say anything, Mick? I never opened me milk. This hotel is disinfected throughout with Jay's fluid. That's uh, not very nice. All we want was news of the daughter, and you talk about Jay's fluid. Just shows you how uh, clean she is in that person. Very you are clean. very clean, always was. Yes, you know, Bridget, and, uh, yeah. I just want to ask you something now, exactly. not to interrupt the floor, not Anton Bush. Not. Oh. This place where she is now, this Amami place, oh. what is it like? The climate, I mean, is well, it torrid, is it cold, is it humid? I'm not very it... sure, but I know when she went over there first, she was in a very, very cold place. Cold, oh, was it cold? Yes, yes. Degrees below zero. Oh, that's miles away. No, 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 that's the climate. Oh, yes. Fahrenheit. Well, oh, that's the Irish for zero, lovely. No, 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 Fahrenheit. No, you like, you sort of... Hang a thermometer out in the hallway and you tap it and it tells you whether you're wet or windy. Very <laughs> yeah. 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 nice. Anyhow, she was over there in this very cold place. What was the name of the cold place now? Oh, a peculiar name, like uh, something like Elastic or something. Elastic! Well, I mean, Alaska. Alaska! What? Alaska! What the hell can I ask us? He's millions of miles away. That boy, is his his bad. since he met Thelma, he's yes, never, never been, been the same. same. Never been the same. What since happened in the cold place? Well, she took up with this young man. Yes. You know? And she was uh, walking out with him for um, a year. Walking for a year? She must have been jaded. <laughs> walking out, going constant. Oh. 
was better than ordinary shampoo. Or archives from the comedy store of RTE. That was Fran Dempsey, one of a long line of Irish comedians with a strange predilection for dressing up in women's clothing. Now I hadn't a clue how to pick out a pair of gloves, Frankie. So I got my sister to go along to one of the famous drapery stores called out the St. Bernard. <laughs> and she picked out a lovely pair of gloves to give to my, I'm sorry for laughing, I know the end of this. <laughs> to give to my girlfriend. She picked out the most delicious pair of gloves, but while she was in the store, she also bought herself a pair of, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Ah, to hell with his knickers. <laughs> she bought herself a pair of knickers, and when she came home, I got the two parcels mixed up, Frankie. <laughs> and instead of sending the gloves to my girlfriend, didn't I send off the knickers in a bag? <laughs> Well, heaven forbid, if she didn't open the parcel and took out the pair of knickers, can you imagine how she felt looking at the knickers as a present from me? It wouldn't have been too bad if it wasn't for the letter I had included with them. <laughs> Which was meant, of course, for the gloves. It said, my dear Catherine, this is a present to show you. I haven't forgotten about your birthday. I've chosen these because I noticed you weren't wearing any the last time you were. If it wasn't for my sister, I would have chosen long ones with buttons. <laughs> but she said the short ones were more fashionable. <laughs> they are, I know, a very delicate color, but the lady I bought them from showed me the pair she was wearing. <laughs> and they looked very well. She'd been wearing them all winter, and they were scarcely so. <laughs> I suggest you keep them nice and clean, because no doubt I'll be kissing the backs of them. <laughs> many times in the coming weeks. And now it's time to meet this week's lucky winner, a most unusual winner, Sister Dolores Mary, who, needless to mention, wishes to remain anonymous. <laughs> Sister, it's a great privilege to present you with this check on behalf of Spot the Ball. Thank you. You are most kind. Sister, was this your first bash uh, at the contest? I mean to say, uh, have you been previously tempted to, to test your skill? <laughs> and okay. perseverance is a great virtue. And then again, you see, it takes so little time. It's not as though one were neglecting one's other duties and responsibilities. And it brings a little flash of excitement into the daily routine. 
it's not that we lack for anything, but the money will be of benefit. Sister, have you ever had any worldly ambitions? I, I wanted to be a bunny girl. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to appear on Mr. Bunny Carr's elevating program. <laughs> Very good indeed, sister. Yes. Uh, but don't you think that this money might affect your style of life, so to speak? Oh, no. We will continue, as always, in our own simple way. Well, thank you very much, sister. And God bless. Good luck. Awesome job, sister. I'm Ben Badu, as they say in Spain. Hope you stay with us until 16.07 hours. That's four minutes past three on Radio Rails on the Big R. This is Justin Adrian St. John Warrington II Jr., your DJ who is one in a million. As T-shirt was one in a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, so terrific. Coming to you live here from Studio 19 in Picture School, downtown Dublin. Sitting as usual behind my Cedarwood studio desk. Oh, I know it's Cedarwood, because if you scratch off the paint, you can see the wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your irrepressible DJ from Drimna, Justin Adrian. And yours truly, the irreversible Cynthia Brewster St. James. Playing all the good sounds for you, skulls and oldies, raves and the graves, the best of the rest, the rest of the best, hit platters, discs and <laughs> And right now, at this very moment in time, let me set the scenes for the teens by telling all you lucky people out there that this Cynthia here beside me is looking very avuncular and insurmountable with a very anesthetic dress that she brought into U.S. of A. Right on, Justin Adrian. <laughs> My new two-piece American dress. Seriously, though, but, uh, do you like it, Justin? <laughs> American dress is right. One yank and it's off. <laughs> but uh, I was just about to dedicate this next hit sound to a beautiful chick I was in a contaminating situation with only last night. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I can't say I hadn't noticed that uh, lipstick on your collar there, Justin. Uh, well, that's not lipstick, India. That's jam, India. <laughs> jam, Justin? Yeah, I was out with a tart. <laughs> but Lord, uh, right on with the dedication, Cynthia. And uh, the first card here, Justin Adrian, comes from Anto, who writes to us all the way from Scaries. Oh, Scaries, yeah. I used to have relations in Scaries. I won't say with who, but it was a great song. <laughs> What's the story, Cynthia? Oh, well, Anto tells us that two years ago, uh, he went on his vocation to Iceland and saw nothing but ice. And last year he went to the Canaries and saw nothing but Canaries. <laughs> and this year he went to the Virgin Islands and saw nothing but rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way you tell them, Cynthia. Oh, yeah. Well, Anto wants us to play a request here for him. Uh, I can't leave your behind alone, love. Oh, sorry, that's uh, I can't leave you behind alone, love. <laughs> Currently a hit nine years ago, sung by Ravens on Rock. One of the greatest singers in the country. <laughs> but one of the worst singers in the city. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Miss Fortunately, uh, we couldn't find that one for you, Anto. So I hope you won't be a sore ass. Oh, sorry. I hope you won't be so as soon as we find him. <laughs> uh, by the way, come to think of it, him, I haven't seen Ravens or Rock on the gig circuits for about uh, three months. What's he doing, Justin? Three months. I've got a card here, folks. The writing is only illegitimate, but from what I can make out, it's from Sniffer McGee and all the gang who are pleased to be employed there at Willie's. And on Casey's tool works. Oh, well, I'm very pleased for him, Justin. <laughs> maybe you should, uh, maybe you should pay the boys there a visit. I hear you've uh, been having a spot of butter with your car, Justin. It's right, Cynthia. It's right. Pissed and broke. <laughs> Same trouble as you had last night, Justin. <laughs> Dab. And here she is, direct from the talk of the town, Walkins Town. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Gladys Day and the Pits.
Chew it down to the nib. And look at the ink you spilled on that tablecloth. And your father hasn't even read it yet. What are you doing? What are you doing? So sums! Don't mention sums to me after that sum you brought home last week. How long would it take A, B and C to fill a bath with water if the bath had a hole in it? <laughs> of all the stupid ways of filling a bath, a were a dessert spoon, B were a pint jug, and oh yeah, C had a bucket. But he had to keep climbing over the gate and spilling 24.9% of the water. <laughs> it should have stuffed him and his bucket down the hole in the bath. <laughs> A, B and C indeed. No wonder they didn't give their real names. <laughs> That chair and would have been locked up. <laughs> and then your father, Professor Einstein. <laughs> Let's do this some practical, says he. <laughs> Take the coal out of the bath. <laughs> Start filling, says he. And, of course, I had to be C with the bucket. <laughs> Climbing over the clothes horse and filling 24.9% of freezing water all over me feet. We're going strong. The landing is under two foot of water. <laughs> the stairs is like Niagara Falls. And you, Christy, make a great discovery. We're doing the wrong song. <laughs> We should be all out in the garden digging a hole and a half in a day and a half. Well, I'm sorry for hitting you with the bucket saw. But my patience and my feet was exhausted. Now go to bed and good night. My mammy said I was to come and show you my first communion dress. What? My mammy said I was to come and show... Uh, who is your mammy? Mrs. Finneberry from St. Alton's Park. Who? She says you and your wife do often meet her at the supermarket. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, um, you're a bit old to be making your first communion, aren't you? I missed the last few years because I had the measles. Uh, yes, well, you're certainly a big girl. I grew in bed. Well, I, I suppose you feel very uh, holy and full of grace on your big day. Yes. Can I have the money now, please? What? The money. I do have a lot of other houses to call at, yes. Oh, um, hmm. well, I suppose we'll certainly have to uh, give you a little something. How much can I put you down for? Well, uh, here's a shilling. What? A shilling. Is this meant to be some sort of a sick joke or something? Now, look here, my girl. This is your communion day. It's a day of prayer. Ah, Jenny! said to a 15-year-old boy, have you got a fairy godfather? The boy said, no, but we've an uncle we're not too sure of. <laughs> you know, it's been a great year for me, really. I made a film with the dog Lassie. I played the lead. <laughs> oh, I made another film, too. 
I played the most important part of Oliver Cromwell. Richard Harris played the rest of them. <laughs> I suppose you expect me to uh, say something about RTE and what goes on out there. Charles Mitchell. He's the most decent of sorts. Charles, you may know, has a great love of animals, and he has given a lot of money away to sick horses. Of course, he doesn't know they're sick when he backs them. <laughs> Gay Byrne, well, he almost runs the place out there. But uh, he is self-conscious, you know. You wouldn't think it, but he is. He can't even go to rugby matches now. He thinks when the players get into a scrum, they're talking about it. <laughs> Music, my story. Music. Well, as Don Coburn will testify, the job of stand-up comedian, they say, is the hardest of the lot. Let's end this selection of comic cuts with a selection of stand-up comics filmed in the Olympia Theatre in Dublin in the early 1970s. Some of the best in the business, Harry Bailey, Danny Commons, Cecil Sheridan, Noel Guinnity, Hal Roach. But first, a police message. Good evening and welcome to Cabaret Patrol. And as usual, we are looking for a number of jokes which have been stolen. And the first gag tonight we are looking for concerns a man who goes into a licensed premises where the penis owns a monkey. After some time, the monkey, it appears, relieved himself into the man's pint of beer. As a direct result of this, the man inquired of the penis, do you know your monkey's peeing in my beer? To which the penis is alleged to have replied, no, but if you whistle it, I'll join in. <laughs> As the public will appreciate, many of these jokes are old and frail. They are of no financial worth to anyone, but of extreme sentimental value to their owner. Many of these antique gems have been taken from the collection of Mr. Hal Roach. <laughs> Sadly, on this programme, we have had to report an increase in the number of attacks on mother-in-laws. The first attack occurred in a cabaret room last Saturday night where a man in a white suit claimed that his mother-in-law was drummed out of the Gestapo for cruelty. As hundreds sat around helplessly, he went on to say that he had got a coloured television for his mother-in-law and he felt it was a fair exchange. Well, from attacks on mother-in-laws to attacks of another kind, this time on Kerry men. We are looking for the man who got away with a number of jokes, such as the one about the Kerry man with a pet zebra named Spot, the Kerry jellyfish, which set, the Kerry hitchhiker who got up early to avoid the traffic, and the Kerry man who attacked someone with a razor. Fortunately, however, it wasn't plugged in. As I say, this joker got away with these gags, but only just. <laughs> oh, clever, isn't it? Clever, good stuff, yeah. Come back here. Oh, well. And after that, the two, two hours on the bus, you know, one hour said to the other, how are you? And I said, I'm not well. You have to go down to Spencer on Tuesday. See who's sitting? Dr. Killing Quick. See, he's a quack. Treating a fella for three years for yellow jambers and then they found out he was a Chinaman. <laughs> she don't know what I'm gonna do. She how's your new house? Oh, the new house terrible, terrible. The walls she like tissue paper. The walls are like tissue paper. Table tin. See, I was cooking me joints in the oven the other day, and I opened the door of the oven to see how it was going on, and the fella next door was dipping his bed in me gravy. <laughs> But the big thing that amazed me about Dublin today is these Turkish baths. They're opening up everywhere, aren't they? All the time. So I decided the other day to go and have a Turkish bath. And when I got there, the place was all steam, white tiles and steam everywhere. So I took all my clothes off. And when the steam cleared, I was in a fish and chip shop. <laughs> well, it could happen. And there's a fellow... 
there's a fella standing beside me and he's got a lady's corset on. I said, how long have you been wearing the lady's corset? He said, ever since the wife found it in my car. He didn't last long after that either. Then I got married myself. I was not going to with myself for a few years, you know. Then I was passing by the Gresham one day and I see this boy outside, you know. So we look at her, she looks at me, I says, a young. She says, yes, and we went off together, you know. And on the way to her home, she told me she was a model, that she'd been photographed in London, painted in Rome, and plastered in Paris. <laughs> I found out afterwards she was a widow with six kids. But that didn't worry me, because I always like to deal with an old established firm. I said to myself, hey, I'm done up, lovely. You know what I mean? I had everything. Do you like this flock? The bad wire scourge protects the property and it doesn't spoil the view. Oh, it's lovely. And the Guinness's haircut waves in front, battles at the back. Well, I said to myself here, I said, now, I'm posh job. Went for a job, missus. At what? A fashion model. Oh, you have no idea. Oh, that's ter- that'll finish up in some pay, but news the world or something. That's terrible. I walked in. The fellow measured me and I said, what's your measurements? I said, 38, 24, and mind your own business. Well, he gave me that. He gave me a gown. You should have seen it, missus. Biblical. If it was cut any lower, I'd have been bidding me bare feet. It was terrible. Oh, terrible. A biblical gown, lo and behold. And there was one word in it. Oh, there was one word in it. I'm not telling you a word of a lie. She had a 48-inch chest. 48, cut low. And she was leaning over the table talking to the fella. She said, I, I think I have a touch of heart for it. And he said, no wonder. Your left one is in the ashtray. Well, here. Oh, I'm not hot. I'd never get out. This is true now. I was coming home from Drada one night and I was stopped outside Valbriggan by a policeman at about one o'clock in the morning. And this was a real policeman. This was a big red neck and all here. <laughs> Stood out in the middle of the road outside Valbriggan. Did he stop? So I stopped. To see you stopped. To say I am. Um, but see, you can't stop there. Say so why. See you're on me foot. He said, you have no lights. Well, he was right, I had no lights. <laughs> and I was wondering why it was so dark. <laughs> <laughs> so I got out, I got out and I gave the fighting mud guard a bit, a bit of a kick like that and they all lit up, you see. So I can I go now, officer? Never called them guard late at night. <laughs> he said, you have no front lights. So I went round the front and I gave the front mud guard a bit of a kick and they all lit up. So I can I go now? He says, before you go any place, he says, you better jump up on the bonnet and kick the windscreen because your tax is out as well. <laughs> Not too much applause, please. It's a very old building. And a fellow knocks at Mrs. McPherson's door. She was a Scotswoman. She came. He says, uh, Mrs. McPherson, he says, I'm collecting for the new swimming pool. So she gave him a bucket of water. <laughs> An old lady walking along with a dog past the building site, a bricklayer sitting on a hot of bricks at Levenses, eating a big sandwich. And as she passed, the little dog stopped and looked up at this big fellow eating the, the sandwich. And the old lady said, excuse me, sir. She said, would you like to throw the dog a bit? So he threw him about 50 yards. Well, uh, friends, this was no ordinary dog. It was a singing dog. the short, puppy answer to that particular old riddle. Oh, God, program. Programs wasn't the word. I can't remember what the word was. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't, no, it wasn't programs, no. And um, all films, stories, news, advertisements, more news, uh, slows down. Aye. Slows down was damn good now. Aye. That, that was on, oh, God, most of the night now. <laughs> Funny enough, I noticed that now, if I closed down. <laughs> and there was a bad old hum. <laughs> was the only way you could describe it now. <laughs> Off that program, now. Oh, God, a high-pitched, monotonous whine, now. 
Uh, all night sustained indefinitely, a continuous, monotonous tone now. And it was hard to listen to it now, to be honest. You, uh, you, you couldn't listen to it, no. But uh, we, we listened to it anyway. Aye. And about, about four o'clock in the morning, uh, my grandfather would say uh, he, he would be the first to notice it. Aye. <laughs> Oh, 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 there, there, was, there was no flies uh, on, on Grandad, no, aye. Uh, maybe one or two in the summer. <laughs> uh, boys, oh boys. Oh, indeed. Boys, oh boys. That's that, I suppose. Oh, I suppose it is, Mickey. I suppose it is. I wonder when he'll be back. <laughs> I wonder will he ever be back. <laughs> bye, bye, so, so bye. <laughs>